Hello everyone. Once again, welcome to PM Networking. Hope you all are doing great. Guys, in the previous video, we discussed the real-time configuration of a small company's network. And this is my topology. So if you have not watched that video, then first watch that video, then watch this video. Because in part 1, we discussed many things, like the basic configuration you can see of this topology. DSCP configuration, gateway configuration, like SVI configuration, then edge router configuration, translation configuration, NAT configuration, and all the end devices were able to access internet. Right? We had configured the primary secondary scenario with the help of SLA. I, I had configured the tracking, right? And ISP one was my primary ISP, ISP two was the backup ISP. Right. So all end devices was able to access internet via primary ISP. If ISP1 is up, if ISP1 is down, then all the users are able to access internet via secondary ISP. First of all, I will uh, verify that, that, that all these end users are able to access internet or not. But guys, before verification, let me tell you what is the agenda for today class, for today video. So guys, today video is very very important and this is completely real time scenario, right? As a network engineer, we are doing same thing in the industry, right? So within my experience, I am going to tell you how you can advertise your own subnet to the global internet. Like as you know, we have some internal server here. Right. Let's say in this network, I have one server here, HTTP server or the mail server. And I want to give access to this server to outside user, means user on internet. So that's why here I have added one PC, right? So this PC is nothing but one user on internet. So what I want guys, this user can access my internal server, right? Or let's suppose on the same server, on this server, I am running one application, app one, app one. So that application should be accessible from the internet from the outside user or from the remote side right we will discuss about the remote side later so whatever subnet we will use for this application i have to advertise that subnet to the global internet right that means here i have to use public ip address in the last video we also talked about the ip block public ip block and the esn esn es number autonomous system number as i told you if you have something in your internal network and you want to provide access to the user on internet then you have to purchase ESN first. How you will purchase the ESN? I already told you you can purchase ESN from your RIR, right? Regional internet registry. If you are in India then your RIR is APNIC. APNIC, right? So you can visit to the official website of APNIC and then you can request for the ESN. You have to share the details like you have to share the topology, like you have to tell to APNIC that you, you are using multi-home, means you have connection from multiple ISP. You have to share the topology, you have to share the requirement and after that they will allocate one ESN, right? And you are going to use that ESN to configure BGP on your ES router, right? And there are guys two types of ESN, one is private and other one is public. So private means we are going to use the private inside the network. Let's say this is my branch, right? And guys, I have one another network, let's say two kilometer far from this, right? Two kilometer far. And I am using my own cable, let's say fiber cable to connect these two network together. So here I can use BGP between these two sides. Right, and I can use BGP ES private ES number. Right, I can use here private ES number. So private ES number is used for the internal network. For the internal routing, you can use it, or you can say like you have multiple sites, correct, guys, and you have connected all the sites through service provider network. Multiple service providers are involved in the connectivity like this. Right. So what you are going to do, you are going to create now VPN over the public network. You are going to create the VPN here also, here also, here also, maybe here also, maybe here also like this. So on this VPN virtual network, you are going to configure, let's say BGP, right? Definitely you need what ES, 
ES number, ESN. So which type of ESN you will use here? Private ESN. And guys, private ESN is not routable on the internet. Private ESN is not routable on internet. So if you want to advertise some subnet to the internet, you need what? Public ESN. Private ASN is used for public and private. Public and private. There are two types of ASN. Like your IP address, you have two types of IP address, private and public. Private are free of cost but not routable on the internet. Public is payable but routable on the internet. So if you want to reach to internet, you can reach through public private IP address also with the help of NAT. Here you have to configure translation. right? So with the help of NAT, again there are multiple types of NAT. So like dynamic NAT, static NAT and PAT. PAT, right? So guys, in dynamic NAT and PAT, you can access the internet, but internet cannot access you. This is unidirectional. But the static NAT is bidirectional, right? You can also access the internet and internet can also access you. And for one IP address in the static NAT, for one private IP address, you need one public IP address. Right. So if I have lots of servers here, I have to purchase lots of public IP address and I have to create lots of entries for the NAT. Correct. But again, as here we have connectivity from two different ISP, ISP1 and ISP2. So let's say the my private IP address is 192.162.2.100. 2.100, right. And my public IP address is 1.1.1.1 via ISP1, right? So you have two ISP, so you need two public IP address for the static NAT, right? One via ISP1, one via ISP2. Now the question is how outside user will come to know which public IP address I should use to access the internal server. With the help of a static NAT, outside user can access your internal server with the help of public IP address. Simply they will hit on public IP address and your age daughter is going to translate the IP, public IP into the private IP address. So one public IP address will be translated into one private IP address that is, that is a static NAT. As here you have two connectivity, you will have two entry, right? Means one private IP address for one IP, private IP address, we have two public IP address, right? Let's say 1.1.1.1 via ISP1 and 2.2.2.2 via ISP2. How outside user will came to know which, IS, which IP address I should use? So here in the you know global internet, in the internet network, ISP network, they will use DNS, DNS failover, right? So DNS is going to track the ISP, but guys, there will be some delay because of cache. Devices are going to store cache, right? Like uh, entry in their cache memory. So there will be some delay. So that's why most of the companies are advertising their own subnet to the global internet, right? And today we are going to understand that only how to advertise our own subnet to internet to the global internet. Correct. So let's say my public IP address for this server is 100.1.1.1, right? So I will advertise this subnet or this IP address to internet. Correct. Now this is concern of internet, how they will route it via ISP1 or via ISP2 it will check the best path and even I can configure primary and secondary in the BGP I can increase the weight so today agenda is to understand this advertisement of on submit to internet to the global internet right and that's why I told you to advertise your on submit to the global internet first of all you need IP block public IP block because only public IP addresses are outable on internet. So we, ha we have to purchase public IP address. One block of public IP address. So you can use slash 24, you can use slash 25. And I have already purchased one public submit. You can see this one, 100.1.1.0 slash 24. And after that guys, we did subnetting, right? And I have already used two subnet. You can see these two subnets are already used. I'm using this submit 100.1.1.0 slash 28 between ISP1 and Edge router. Here on this link, I'm using this submit. I'm already using this one also, right? Between ISP2 and Edge router, this submit. Today I'm going to use third submit here for my internal server and will advertise that to 
the internet so to advertise that to internet we need one more thing that is ESN right and guys we have two types of ESN public and private right public is the AS number which is globally unique right which is globally unique which can be identified your network on the internet right so here we need public ESN through public ESN anyone on internet can identify your network right so that will be identity of my network correct so I'm going to use public ESN here and that is nothing but the identity of your network on internet on the global internet and there are many RIR in the world who is providing public ESN so you have to purchase this like APNIC is there RIPE is there right Arian is there right so in India we have what APNIC so from APNIC I am going to purchase the ESN now guys the range of public ESN is 1 to 6 4 six four five double one this is the range of public ESN right so I have ISP ISP is going to give me any ES number from this range right and if I will talk about the range of private ESN so range of private ESN is six double six four five one two two six double five three five 65535 this is the range of private so we can use private ESN in in the internal network right it is not routable on the internet but today we are going to talk about the public ESN so let's suppose I have purchased one ESN from the RIR from the APNIC and they have provided me this ESN number 65 sorry not 564 triple zero right or let's say they have given me the simple ES number one which is the public ESN my ES number is one or let's say 100 now ISP is also going to configure BGP on their router right so I am going to configure BGP ES number 100 here and I will form BGP pairing with internet router internet router is let's say using ES number 200 here 200 here so which type of BGP universe we will form here eBGP eBGP we will form eBGP universe between our edge router and ISP so configuration of BGP on ISP router is concern of ISP right they are going to configure the BGP we will negotiate with the ISP we will be sharing the IP address like the IP address which I am running over here and the IP address which ISP router is running on their router so I need the IP address of ISP router, ISP need the IP address of my router because they have to define the newer IP address, correct? So we will have one mutual understanding with the ISP for the BGP configuration. Once we will have BGP pairing between the ISP and our edge router, we will advertise the subnet, right? So guys, first of all, I need what? Yes. So let's suppose my ES number is my ESN is 100 right and my public IP my public IP on edge router is IP is 100.1.1.1 correct via ISP on this interface E 0 slash 1 right on E oh sorry F one slash zero and my public IP address my public IP hundred dot one dot one dot seventeen on F two slash zero by ISP two right then guys ISP one ISP one ES number is 
ESN is let's say 200 right and public IP address public IP is 100.1.1. Last IP address from this subnet is configured on ISP.R. So last subnet is 14. 14 is the IP address of ISP1. Then ISP2. ISP2 ESN is also 200. ISP2 ESN is 200 and their public IP address is IP is 100.1.1. Again, last IP address. So, next network will be 32. So, broadcast ID of this network is going to be what? 31. So, last IP valid IP address will be 30. 30. Done. So, we need this information to configure the BGP, right? Now, we will form BGP pairing with the help of this information. Now, I need one subnet, public subnet for the internal servers. So let me do one thing. Let me use third network from this public subnet, which is 100.1.1.0.0.0.32.28, right? Submit mask will be same 255.255.255.240, right? Here I am using this subnet for internal server. Internal server. So now we have everything. Now we can configure the BGP. First of all, understand how to form BGP pairing. Before that, I am going to verify the connectivity here, like the previous configuration. So, see, I am going to access PC1, okay? And DSCP is already there. So, PC1 can get IP address from the DSCP server and after that, I will try to access, let's say 8.8.8 .8 or 1.1.1. These are the servers on internet. Like you can say, this is Google server. Right. And after that, guys, after the BGP configuration, my internal server should be accessible with the help of public IP address from the internet. Right. So we'll verify from this user device, which is user on internet. So how can this user in, uh, device access my internal server? Let's say web page, HTTP. Right. So for practical, what I will do, I will configure any service here. Let's say HTTP. Right, and then I will try to access this HTTP means application, internal application from the outside, from the internet with the help of public IP address. Done. And guys, these are nothing but the router only, right? ISP routers. And in the ISP network, they are running any routing, right? They are running, uh, they have DNS. Right? Many things will be there in the ISP network there will be the routing, right? Like all devices are reachable with each other. Like all public IP addresses will be reachable with each other. Once you will advertise your own subnet to the internet, it internet is going to advertise it with the other internet. Like ISP, your ISP, this ISP is going to advertise that with this internet. This ISP will all, also advertise it to this internet. And this router will again perform what best, best path selection, right? So in the ISP network, already there is re redistribution, maybe if they are using any other routing protocol, right? So BGP on this edge router, BGP will be redistributing into other routing protocol or they are using maybe BGP, right? So automatically, once you will advertise subnet in BGP on your edge router, it will uh, advertise to ISP1 and ISP2, ISP1 will advertise it to other ISPs, right? So the subnet will be on the global internet, like everyone, from the internet can access your server. So let me first verify the previous configuration, last day configuration. For that, I am going to access PC. And on this PC, I'm going to say IP DHCP. So this machine should be able to get IP address from the DHCP server. But see, this machine is not getting IP address from the DHCP server. So guys, in the last video, we had configured SBI on this switch right and dscp on this server so it this machine is not able to get ip address from the dscp server how we can troubleshoot it simply we can first check that dscp server is sending offer message or not for that i can debug ip dhcp server and then i can say events right now let me try to assign ip again for dscp 
no see dscp server is not generating any offer message that means dscp server is not receiving the discover message right now why it is not generating the or why this server is not receiving the discover message right so we need to troubleshoot it so to, to troubleshoot it you can check the mac address table of these switches that these switches are learning mac address or not like switch number two switch two should learn mac address of dhcp server on this port and this switch should learn mac address of pc1 on this port even it will learn the mac address of their default gateway on this port on 0 slash 0 because default gateway is on this switch distribution layer switch here i have created svi in the last video right so even you can verify the svi to verify the svi here simply i can run command so ip interface brief and you can see there are two svi one for vlan 10 one for vlan 20 right and so interface trunk done and so mac address table see guys this switch is learning mac address of pc1 on 0 slash 1 interface this is correct right in vlan 10 but this switch is not learning any mac address on 0 slash 2 port which is connected with dscp server that means there is some issue between maybe distribution layer switch and access layer switch 2 or between access layer switch 2 and the server so to troubleshoot simply i will access this switch Distrib access layer switch 2 let me access this switch and here i am going to check the mac address table so mac address table and you can see this switch is learning mac address on 0 slash 0 interface there are some mac address on 0 slash 0 interface even there is i think mac address of pc1 you can verify it by running so ip here you can see the mac address is 6802 and 6802 this mac address is here on 0 slash 0 interface that means this switch is learning mac address of pc1 but this switch is not learning mac address of server right dsap server and you know whenever we are troubleshooting the layer 2 port right layer 2 switch we should check interface status like this interface should be up right device should be connected over here so we can verify the status by running command show interface status right and you can see guys 0 slash 3 interface is in error disable oh this interface is in error disable now why this port is in error disable to verify it we can check the running configuration of this port so so run interface is 0 slash 3 and you can see here we are running port security right port security is enabled on this port and the method of mac address is stk means it will learn mac address dynamically and you can see even the mac address on this port is this one let me verify is it the mac address of server so to verify it i can check mac address of server so interface f0 slash 0 include bia and the mac address of server is this one right no you can see switch have different mac address on this port and we are allowing only one mac address right so guys this is the reason why this port is in error disable now why switch have learned different mac address that is maybe because of previous configuration right even we can check it over here so port security and then we can say address right it will show you the address like the stk address these are the stk address secure stk on 0 slash 3 port you can see the mac address is this one which is not the mac address of server this is the different one right so guys to fix it what we can do we can run command here clear port security I am not able to run this command maybe this command is not working on this switch or maybe because of simulation so we can do one more thing here I can say interface e0 slash 3 and no switch port port security stk port security address stk port security mac address stk I have removed it and then I can again say port security MAC address STK before that let me verify it so port security address right so now you can see we don't have any MAC address on 0 slash 3 interface in the port security table now do so 
interface status and guys in the status we are still able to see the port is in error disable a status is error disable so to correct it simply i can shut the port and then i can run no shut right even we can verify the reason of error disable why this port is in error disable mode by running command so interface then we can say a status and after that error disable and enter now you can see the reason here reason is guys port secure means port security violation this port is in error disable because of port security violation right so i have to shut the port and then i have to no shut the port again interface e0 slash 3 0 slash 3 say shut down and then again i am saying no shut and now so interface status now you can see port is connected now again i can here enable the st key right port security right before that let me try to get ip address from the dscp server now say ip dscp and this time the still machine is not able to get ip now you can see this machine is generating the offer message we are able to see some message and even pc have got the ip address which is 192.168.1.1 right so now this switch have the correct mac address on 0 slash 3 port so we can now enable the port security sticky method again so let me take you to access their switch 2 and on interface e0 slash 3 i am going to add the command switch port port security mac address sticky right so port security port security and the address now you can see switch up correct mac address on 0 slash 3 port right we can write the configuration right so pc have got the ip address now let me try to access internet ping 8.8.8.8 and you can see i am not able to ping 8.8.8 now again we need to troubleshoot it why i am not able to ping and see it is saying destination host unreachable that means maybe this switch don't have the default route right so this switch should mean means my default gateway should have one default route here so ip route so default route is not there in the table so guys to add default route again we have two option either i can configure default route manually here or whatever protocol routing protocol we are running between router and this distribution layer switch we can advertise default route on th in that routing protocol on router number one on each router right like if i am running ospf i can say default information originate right or i can configure statically here let me say ip route 0 .0 .0, 0 0 0.0.0.0 exit interface is e0 slash 0 and next of ip address is 10.1.1.2 I am running this subnet 10.1.1.0 slash 24 between edge router and distribution layer switch. So say 2. And now again let me try to ping internet from the PC and this time I am expecting ping should work. Still ping is not working and this time I am getting request timeout error. So we have to troubleshoot and to troubleshoot it I have to access this router right here i can check that this router is performing natting or not and before that so ip route include 0, 0.0 default route must be there and there is one default route via which isp guys via isp2 now why default route is via isp2 maybe isp1 is down right so let me try to ping isp1 first 100.1.1.14 uh, so see i am not able to ping the internet router right isp1 right and so ip route i had configured one static route for 8.8.8 .8. yes here you can see this is the reason why and machines means pc1 is not able to access internet let me try to ping 1.1.1 ping 1.1.1.1 which is also one server on internet and i am not able to ping 1.1.1 also so again let me take you to edge router and here from here i am going to ping 1.1.1.1 and say source 
fast ethernet 0 slash 0 no nope. i am not able to ping that means guys net is not working properly right so we have to troubleshoot the net now to troubleshoot net let me do one thing debug ip net i have debug enable the debugging for net and let me try to ping 1.1.1 1 .1 .1 again and see this order is not performing any translation over here right so so run section net so net is not there net is not running over here i think so i had forget to run forget to save the configuration so run interface f0 slash 0 net is not there let me configure the net first interface f0 slash 0 ip net inside and before that to ping 1.1.1.1 am I able to ping 1.1.1 .1 yes I am able to ping 1.1.1 .1 am I able to ping 8.8.8 .8? no I am not able to ping 8.8.8 .8. so I think this ISP ISP1 is down so IP interface or I can say so interface so in IP interface brief so yes you can see this interface is administratively down so let me up this interface interface f0 slash 0 say no set right on oh, this interface will come up your track will come up if track is running there do so track yes track is there and track is down now right so i have up the isp one soon this track will come up and once this track will come up it will install default or towards isp one before that i am configuring nat here so on this interface ip net inside exit then interface range f1 slash 0 and f2 slash 0 these interfaces are outside so ip net outside right and then guys i need one net entry here so say ip net and before that i need to create access list to match the internal submit access list number let's say 10 and i am saying permit 192.168. 0, 0.0 where all the submit will come and wildcard mask 0.0.255.255 .0 .0 .255. now you can see your track is up so if your track is up do so ip route include 0.0.0, .0. so if track is up you can see it have changed the default route now default route is reachable via isp1 the reason do so track the track is up fine so i have created the acl do so acl access list yes we have one access list where i am matching the internal submit now guys i need to configure nat here so ip nat inside source and i am going to match source from this number 10 and then say interface to enable pat pat but guys to configure pat here see we need route map as well because we have two isp right so if you have two isp connectivity from two isp so you we need to configure nat between isp1 and isp2 so to configure nat between isp1 and isp2 we have to create route map here right so before configuring nat let me do one thing let me create two route map here route map and the name of route map let's say primary first route map is primary primary and after that we can define the sequence number let's say number 10 right then i am saying match ip address from list number 10 it will match ip address from the list 10 means access list number 10 and now guys i am saying match interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 right it will match the interface from fast ethernet 1 slash 0 right this is just in the route map i am saying match ip address from this um, uh, access list and then match this interface if these two things will match then it will perform translation right why is for isp1 right and in the same way we will create one more route map for backup isp also right 
so let me say route map route map here secondary or backup backup again sequence number let's say 10 here also we need to match IP address and the interface so IP is going to be same match IP address from list number 10 and match interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 right I have created two route map here do so route map you can see two route map is there one with name primary and one with name backup this is the backup in the backup it will match IP address from the access list number 10 and it will match this interface right in the secondary it will match IP address from list number 10 and it will match this interface now we can configure the NAT so say IP NAT inside and source source it will not match source from the access list but it will match source from the route map so say here route map and name of your route map primary let me copy the route map name primary enter right then guys to which interface if it will match then it will translate the IP address which is running on interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 and to configure pad just yet add this keyword overload done now I need one more NAT entry here IP NAT inside source again from the route map and the name of your route map the another route map is backup so let me copy the name this is case sensitive route map name backup and interface fast ethernet 2 slash 0 and after that I am saying what our load now so IP NAT so IP NAT or I can say statistics so you can see we have two NAT entry here guys outside inside insert interfaces are there and then two NAT entry are there right and it will match source from the route map done now let me try to check the routing table so IP route include 0, 0.0 I want to see the default route so default route is there towards ISP1 until and unless track will be up default route will be towards ISP1 if you are not clear with these things please watch my first part one video right because in part one we had configured these all things now let me ping 1.1.1.1 and say source fast ethernet 0 slash 0 from the LAN interface and this time I was expecting ping but ping is still not working so now we need to we need to troubleshoot it we need to troubleshoot it so run interface f0 slash 0 so guys see here IP address is 10.1.1.2 right but it will perform translation for the IP address which will match in list 10 so so access list in access list we are defining this submit which is my internal submit so let me try to ping from PC from PC1 again I'm going to ping 1.1.1 and now you can see this time ping is working ping is working means end users are able to access internet right and end users are able to access internet via which ISP via ISP 1 because ISP 1 is up even I can trace 1.1.1.1 and uh, yes you can see traffic is going to default gateway means distri distribution layer switch then it is forwarding to router and router is forwarding traffic to 100.1.1.14 which is ISP 1 what will happen if ISP 1 will goes down let me do one thing let me down the ISP 1 here I have done the router right 
Now guys, once ISP1 bill goes down, it will change the default route on all. First of all, I have disabled the debugging, right? So show IP route include 0.0.0. .0. So default route is still towards ISP1. This is just because of timer. Track is still up. So track, you can see track is now down. So on stack will goes down. Now you can check the default route. Now default route is towards ISP2. Right now, default route is towards ISP2. So, this time, this time, this PC can access internet via ISP2. So, let me ping again 1.1.1, and you can see ping should work again. Why ping is not working? Clear IP NAT translation things would work I think this is error of simulation software because things should work debug IP NAT and again I am going to ping no it is not performing any translation so IP NAT translation there is nothing so run section IP NAT now it should forward traffic from fast ethernet to slash zero route map backup that is fine so run interface F2 slash zero yeah this interface is al already configured as outside the IP address is 17 ping 100 dot 1 dot 1 dot mm, 30 yes I am able to ping ping 1 dot 1 dot 1 dot 1 yes I am able to ping then why this user is not able to ping internet and even it is not performing the translation so route map let me check if there is any issue in the route map that will match IP from the list and uh, oh sorry guys see here in this route map I have matched which interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 but I should match 2 slash 0 so I need to correct it simply I can say no route map backup backup or it will be better if you will copy the name backup and now I am going to create again route map with name backup sequence number 10 action is permit match IP address from list address from a list number 10 and this time I am saying match interface fast ethernet to slash 0 then now show route map now the interface is correct and let me try to ping again now you can see ping is working right and this time this order is translating source into guys this IP address so IP NAT translation in the translation you can see it is translating into 100.1.1.17 source this IP address into the, this destination on all even you can trace route from here trace 1.1.1.1 1 .1 .1 .1 and you can see traffic is going via ISP2 when again ISP1 will come up let me up the ISP1 when again ISP1 will come up just it is booting now ISP1 router is booted so IP interface brief this interface is down so let me up it no set and I am going to save the configuration this was my mistake done soon track will come up on router 1 so track so track track is still down just wait for some time clear IP 
net translation star and so track track is still down we can change the timer right we can change this timer for now i am going to disable debugging on server router also let me close the console even i don't need access of this switch ping 8.8.8.8 see i am not able to ping 8.8.8 .8. just wait for some time in the simulation it's taking long time ping 100.1.1.17 what happened is isp1 is still down no isp1 is up so ip interface brief yeah the interface is up ping should work so ip interface brief on the edge router 100.1.1.1 this interface is up ping a dot a dot a dot it why ping is not working what happened clear ip net translation and so ip net translation there is nothing so track track is still done see this router is actually this router is not able to ping guys 8.8.8 so we are tracking 8.8.8 so until and unless it will not get reply from 8.8.8 this this router will be using default or towards isp2 only right so even user can access internet yes users are able to access internet but track is still down mm. interface f1 slash 0 no ip not outside and then let me ping a dot a dot it still i am not able to ping a dot a dot it just wait uh, let me troubleshoot it here there is some issue and i think it looks like the issue of simulation route is there yeah it dot it dot it is already there interface f1 slash 0 first of all ip net outside uh, that is this interface now see everything is fine so ip interface brief so ip interface brief this interface line protocol status everything is up then also uh, router one is not able to ping isp1 100.1.1.1 let me ping the self ip address even self ip address is not working even router one is not able to ping the self ip address 10.1.1.1 sorry yeah one yes this ping is working so this is guys issue of simulation even you can see router one is not able to ping their self ip address 100.1.1.1 even i am disabling the nat then also interface f1 slash 0 no ip nat outside and then can i ping no
so this is issue of simulation software right so ip route 100 route is there this network is already there in the routing table exit interface is fast ethernet 1 slash 0 ping, this ping should work but this ping is not working ping 100.1.1.30 isp2 even i am able to ping isp2 interface f1 slash 0 news ip net outside so what i can do guys i have to reboot this router right because there is issue even self ip address is not pinging now for now what i am going to do here let me try one more thing interface f2 slash 0 says shut down no then also it's not working debug ip ICMP no I am not able to ping even it is not generating ICMP packet here right let me up f2 slash 0 interface f2 slash 0 said no set just try to understand now the BGP configuration right I cannot do anything here guys because this is a issue with simulation software right see and users are able to access internet but via ISP2 not via ISP1 trace 1.1.1 .1 .1. see I, via ISP2 it is reachable now let's suppose in the internal subnet my subnet is this one so I can do one thing I can configure IP address from this public submit on the server right S on the server I am going to configure one public IP address interface f0 slash 0 IP address IP address from this public third public submit 100.1.1. let's say 32 is my submit so I am using 33 and again last IP address of the submit I will use on route on the distribution layer switch as a default gateway 240 I have changed the IP address right now I am going to put this user in different VLAN in VLAN let's say 100 right so I have to change here access their switch to configuration also config t interface e0 slash 3 and I have to disable port security as well otherwise what will happen again it will put the port in error disable because MAC address of server is going to be different now so say no switch port port security or we can allow more than one MAC address here I can say switch port port security MAC address maximum let's say 5 right so I have configured maximum 5 here and so interface status done port is not in error disable I need one more thing here on this access layer switch 2 I need to allow VLAN 100 on the trunk links so interface trunk you can see by default only VLAN 10 and 20 is allowed over here yesterday we had only allowed VLAN 10 and 20 on trunk link so interface is 0 slash 0 switch port trunk allowed VLAN and then I have to say add VLAN 100 I am going to add now so interface trunk you can see on the trunk link VLAN 100 is also allowed now let me access this gateway device and on this gateway device I need to create one more SVI for VLAN 100 so interface VLAN 100 and VLAN 100 must be there in the VLAN database so we will create VLAN 100 as well then IP address 
what will be the last IP address from this submit guys next submit will be 48 right so broadcast ID of this submit is going to be 47 and last valid IP address will be 46 so say 46 255 255 255 dot 240 right then VLAN 100 sorry correct now we need to allow vlan 100 on the trunk link so interface range e 0 slash 1 to 2 switch port trunk allowed vlan add 100 done now let me try to ping the default gateway from this server server should be able to ping the default gateway ping 100.1.1.46 was the default gateway ip address and ping is not working let me access switch to access layer switch to so interface status these ports are connected 0 slash 0 connected all are good here and so mac address table it have the mac address on 0 slash 3 interface let me verify so interface f 0 slash 0 include BIA is it learning same MAC address or not yeah MAC address is same this switch is learning MAC address of both interface and then definitely we have to access this switch distribution layer switch and so IP route it have installed the 100 prefix in the routing table yes it have installed it so IP interface brief so this interface is up so interface trunk so on the trunk link VLAN 100 is also allowed then what is the issue why I am not able to ping the default gateway from the server let me try to ping server from the default gateway 100.1.1. the IP address was the first IP address from the submit which is 33 so 33 33 I am not able to be okay so default gateway is required on the server sorry we have to configure default gateway IP address on the server default gateway IP address is different include let's say default so you can see the default gateway IP address is guys 192.2.254 I have to change it say IP default gateway is 100.1.1.46 and now let me try to ping again and this time ping should work still ping is not working so IP route and ping 100.1.1.46 let me ping the self IP address and you can see I'm able to ping the self IP address 33 I'm not able to ping the server on access layer switch 2 let me check the interface status once again 0 slash 3 is connected 0 slash 2 is also connected so MAC address table done now what you can do you can check the ARP table of server server is able to resolve ARP MAC address of default gateway or not so IP ARP no you can see for this IP address entry is incomplete right so guys what can be the reason so interface F0 slash 0 include BIA this is the MAC address let me check the distribution layer switch like distribution layer switch is learning this MAC address or not so MAC address table and I am seeing address this address yes this switch is also able to learn MAC address on this port but it is learning in VLAN 20 but this should be in VLAN 100 okay so on this switch on access layer switch 2 I have to change the this port right now this port should be in VLAN 100 this was the issue so on access there switch 2 I am going to change the VLAN 
इंटरफेस e0/3 से स्विच पोर्ट एक्सेस विलन 100 एंड नाउ अगेन लेट मी पिंक टू द डिफॉल्ट गेटवे फ्रॉम द सर्वर एंड दिस टाइम एट लीस्ट आई एम एक्सपेक्टिंग पिंग एंड नाउ यू कैन सी पिंग इज वर्किंग राइट गाइस नाउ पिंग इज वर्किंग मींस सर्वर इज एबल टू पिंग देयर डिफॉल्ट गेटवे डन नाउ on the default gateway on this switch we have this route so ip route Def like public subnet is there in the routing table now guys we need to advertise that public subnet to router number one to the edge router right so what i can do i can enable the routing protocol here what routing protocol i am running here do so ip protocol do so ip protocol I'm running OSPF, so do so IP OSPF interface brief. OSPF is enabled on VLAN 20, 10, and E0/0. Now we need to enable on VLAN 100. So IP OSPF one area zero. All interfaces are in area zero. Now on R1 on edge router, I am expecting this public subnet. So IP route and 100.1.1.32, dot dot and you can see this route this submit is available in the routing table of edge router right now guys we need to advertise this public submit to internet right via both isp we need to advertise it but via isp2 it's not working right there is some issue with simulation i will check it later so what i am going to do i am going to show you how to advertise it via isp2 to the internet and i will make one another video right i will reboot router number one first and after that i will check once it will start working i will make one more video on it right how to advertise internal subnet in the global internet right for now here i need to con configure now bgp right and you know my esn is 100 for bgp so let me say router bgp s number 100 and guys never ip address of isp2 router is 100.1.1.30 30 is the IP address, right? Because 32 is the next subnet, 31 is the broadcast ID, and second last I means valid last IP address of this submit is configured on ISP router. So that is 30. Then I am saying remote AS. So remote I AS means ISP AS is 200. So let me say 200, right? Now let me access the ISP router, ISP2 router, and here also I have to configure BGP in real time. ISPs are going to configure BGP on the router, right? This is not your concern, but this is lab. I have to configure it. BGP 200 and say neighbor. Neighbor IP address 100.1.1. Uh, first IP address from the submit, right? Which is 17. 16 is the network ID. 17 is the valid IP address. And remote AS is 100. Now, guys, I am expecting BGP peering between ISP and is router so wait so ip bgp summary yes you can see we have bgp peering correct now on the edge router on r1 you can see even the log message bgp peer is up now guys we need to advertise our submit in bgp right because we are going to advertise this submit to internet right so router bgp S yes, number 100 and say network before running network command you should verify at like whatever prefixes you are advertising in B BGP that must be there in the local routing table so so IP route and 100.1.1.32 this submit is already there so now I can say network 100.1.1.32 and then mask 255.255.255.240 so i have advertised it in bgp so ip bgp you can see it have installed it in their routing table in the bgp table so now edge router is going to advertise it with their peer who is their peer isp2 so ip bgp summary who is the peer isp2 100.1.1.30 so you can verify isp router let me take you to isp2 and here so ip route bgp so you can see guys through bgp this router have learned this prefix right this is your 
internal subnet this is your internal subnet now anyone from the internet like this pc as i told you this is user on internet this user can access my internal server with the help of public ip address and the public ip address of this server is nothing but 100.1.1. 100.1.1.33 correct 100.1.1.33 so ip interface brief yes 100.33 now let me access this pc pc on the internet user on internet and i have access of pc you can see right even you can verify the ip this pc is on internet so they will be using public ip address right or they will be using private ip address and they will be uh, translating the traffic on their is router right so CMD here in this scenario router this PC is directly connected with the inter internet router so I think this PC is using public IP address IP config IP config so yes you can see this PC is using guys public IP address which is 200.1.1.10 let me try to ping the server ping 100.1.1.33 which is the IP address of your internal server and you can see ping is working that means outside user user from the internet are able to ping your server right now whatever application you are going to install on this server that will be accessible from this user so for now let me do one thing let me enable HTTP service here right on the server I am going to enable let's say HTTP service IP HTTP server server or IP HTTP secure SS means uh, HTTPS it is generating RSA done now to access the service what I can do I can open the browser and in the browser I will type the IP address so IP address of the server is 100.1.1.33 and now you can see guys it is asking for the username and password right that means now anyone from the internet can access my internal server but I know guys this video is not cleared because ISP1 is not working link between ISP1 and Azrota is not working so I will make one another video on it for uh, the advertisement of internal subnet to the global internet through BGP right but you can learn it and you can configure this scenario by yourself as well because in your scenario ISP1 will work so you can form the peering between ISP1 and Azure router also and after that you can use any attribute to configure primary and secondary right so I am not going to configure primary and secondary scenario in this video right I will make one another video on it because the video length is also getting guys lengthy it is already more than one hour okay so that's all for today we will make part 3 of this series soon where you will learn the internal submit advertisement through multiple ISP in dual home right and I will show you how you can configure the primary and secondary done that's all for today guys if you have learned something from this video then please hit on like button guys this is completely real time scenario and whatever experience I am getting in the real time right in the industry because as a network engineer I have worked in various company right and I still working only for one reason I am working now I am not working for the money right because I am already earning guys from my students my students are learning from me and they are paying to me right but the reason why I am working in university and why I am changing company you might have seen right like my LinkedIn profile I most of the time I am changing my job the reason I want to learn multiple technology I want to see the multiple infrastructure the configuration so that I can share the knowledge with you right so I am guys get you know collecting the real time knowledge real time experience from the industry and after that I am sharing with you guys through this YouTube channel right so please hit on the like button guys and if you have not subscribed this channel till now please subscribe this channel if you have any question query concern please let me know in the chat in the comment section and if you want to appreciate this video then just please type yes just type yes in the comment section guys to appreciate it will motivate me to make more videos like this it will motivate me to work hard
okay because apart from my office work i am you know spending time for the videos only for my subscriber even i love to share my knowledge right i love to make networking videos but guys your appreciation your motivation is needed right so please type yes in the comment section once you will type yes in the comment section i will get to know these videos are helpful for you and you guys are learning right so i will try to make more videos as much as possible that's all for today guys we'll meet soon in the next video till then stay safe bye bye thanks for watching